Hi, welcome to Vitamin Junkies. I'm Jennifer Lyle. I'm Dr. JJ. And we're addicted to good health. Today, we're going to be talking about omega 3s. Omega 3! We're going to look at what it is, some good food sources, why our bodies need it, and how do you know if you're deficient in omega 3s. So today I'm taking a lovely little fish oil, yummy, 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 tasty, tasty, my favorite source of omega-3. We'll talk about uh, other sources, but really the best source of omega-3 is uh, fish oil. Um, yep. And uh, yes. You uh, can get that either in a capsule or even in a, a oil. My husband prefers to take it just as a spoonful of, of fish oil. Mm -hmm. My kids take it in a chewable capsule. Um, I prefer it in a capsule because sometimes there's some varieties that seem to Repeat? Repeat? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, you could get it in a capsule form, or you could get it in a liquid form. In a liquid form. So just so you know, in the liquid form, this isn't the cod liver oil that your parents used to give you, like a tablespoon of that tasted like crap. They're usually flavored by orange, but with orange or lemon. They're still not ooh super tasty, but they're but they're bearable. My my six and three year old nieces take it all the time, so they're they're fine with it. Um, right. So capsule, you could get it in liquid. You could also get it in children's chewable. So they're all pretty much interchangeable, these oils, in terms, of, um, in terms of how you take them. As long as you get them down in you, that's fine. The biggest issue, for those of you who want to maintain a healthy social life, um, is repeating fish oil. Uh, because, you know, you don't always have a tic-tac around or something like that, or a breath mint. So uh, it's not very pleasant, and it's embarrassing, and, you know, you're basically burping fish. So the trick to that is um, you, uh, you take your fish oils, then you eat, and then uh, you shouldn't really repeat the fish oils. And also making sure you choose a fish oil that um, is a good quality fish oil so you won't repeat it. So when you take your fish oils and then eat afterwards, what happens is that the oil is pretty much uh, almost covered by food. So if there's going to be any gas from digestion, it's not going to it's not going to go up that way. That would be so. the garlic from your Caesar salad rather than the fish oil that you'd be burping up. Yes, then there's other issues uh, with your social life. But then again, if you're having a Caesar salad with someone else, then... Yeah, you're both have the same thing, so it's not a problem. So maybe the problem is you just take your fish oils with the one you love. Oh, there you go. Very nice, very nice. So JJ, what does fish oil, or omega-3s in particular, do for our bodies? Okay, so um, omega-3s are wonderful because, uh, because they're fatty acids, they're involved in uh, pretty much anywhere in your body where fatty acids are needed, anywhere from your brain to cell walls, uh, fatty acids are, are involved in the process. Um, uh, they're natural anti-inflammatories, they have anti-cancer properties. Um, they, uh, in the case of a fish oil, they're mild blood thinners, they lower blood pressure. Um, the, the omega-3 fatty acids are, 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 are definitely essential for a lot of physiological processes in the body. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Now there's EPA and DHA? Yeah, so uh, EPA is eicosapentaenoic acid. Uh, so that's EPA. EPA is commonly known for having more of an affinity for dealing with heart complaints. And then there's docosahexanoic acid, which is DHA, which has more of an affinity for dealing with central nervous system brain complaints or helping with brain development in newborns. Now, how much do we need each day? And is it combined or one of more yeah. one than the other? Um, basically, it's, um, you should always make sure you take a fish oil that has both. Um, I like to give a blend of EPA and DHA regardless of the complaint because you do they do feed off of each other and you do need both. Um, if you're dealing with more of a central nervous system complaint, then obviously you go with a higher DHA. If you're dealing with more of a heart complaint, you go with a higher EPA. I usually give both. Um, what what I normally give people is I have a standard uh, fish oil where you get one, you get 180 milligrams of EPA and you get 120 milligrams of DHA and I use that for the majority of my treatments. Anything from pregnancy to arthritis to memory problems to erectile dysfunction to heart disease to cholesterol etc. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now you keep referring to fish oil. What about for vegetarians? How can um, you get omega-3s? Okay so for uh, other forms of omega-3s um, there's flax. That's probably the most commonly known omega-3. Now the problem with flax is that um, flax oil doesn't convert as well into the EPA and to the DHA. Um, the, the, the mechanism of doing that in the body is, um, uh, is not very energy effective and we're not even sure how much of return you're actually getting in terms of flipping it that way. So in terms of making sure you're getting EPA and DHA, the best way is to take it from the fish oils. So in some cases I ask patients, well, are you okay with taking fish oils? And for those who aren't, then flax is an option. 
The only issue with flax is that flax is slightly estrogenic, so for women who have hormonal complaints and you want to be a bit careful with, with flaxseed oil. Um, you'll also get some omega-3 content in the number 45 foods, so you'll get omega-3 eggs, uh, etc. You can see those on the market. I think soy milk now is fortified with omega-3, and there's a whole bunch of products out there that are uh, fortified with omega-3. Uh, we have some grains here, so this is ground flaxseed, so we have some omega-3s in here. Um, and also hemp seed. Um, hemp seed tends to contain a bit more omega-6, but there is some omega-3 in there also. And so. it's important for flaxseed to be ground, right? Yes, yeah, uh, because when you take a flax seed, it's very difficult for your digestive system to pierce that seed and digest it, because really the fat is uh, maintained within those little tiny flax seeds. So really you need to grind it. Um, there's, we were just chatting earlier about there's some debate. I usually just have patients just take it, put it on a coffee grinder, grind it fresh, and just throw it on their salads or their, or their cereals. Um, other people will get it pre-ground because uh, there's some issues you're saying about the grinding could heat up the oils. Um, so some people just buy pre-ground. I prefer having them do it fresh so the seeds are, are fresher, they're less likely to be rancid. So they're probably interchangeable. Whatever method works for you is fine. So what happens if you're deficient in omega-3s? Well, for if you're deficient in omega-3s, then you'll probably get symptoms of omega-3 deficiency. So commonly dry skin, um, uh, you could have uh, also more prone to maybe joint pain, uh, there could be a number of other complaints too, more on the preventative medicine side that you're not really seeing the benefit. So you may have more of an inflammatory condition, really skin issues, a uh, number of things you could see for fatty bumps, acid deficiencies. Bumps on the back of your arms? Um, I right. see that more with vitamin A. Um, oh, really? You know, necessarily a fatty acid issue, oh, okay. but yeah, it's usually more vitamin A. Oh, yeah. Very mm. good. Mm. And so we looked, We reviewed a few of the good food sources. We've seen mm -hmm. the hemp seed, the flax seed. You've mm -hmm. talked about fish oil. So there's fish oil. Oils. Um, and then what about fish? Uh, uh, fish are great. Um, fish, you just want to be very careful with the predator fish because the predator fish tend to be higher in mercury. You want to be careful with that for your mm -hmm. health. So you want to avoid shark, kingfish, swordfish, and tilefish. These are the predator fish. Um, also albacore tuna, uh, yellowfin tuna. You want to be careful with the tunas too because a lot of them are high in mercury. Um, there was an interesting study um, on, um, on PCBs and salmon where they found that if you cook the fish without its skin and without the uh, this little brown layer of fat on yes. salmon, um, then you'd be able to eliminate all the PCBs that were that were contained there. So it could be something similar with these fish yet, but I haven't come across a study yet. But so, but be careful with predator fish. That brown layer of fat would that not be where the omega threes would be? No, in salmon you will get some fat in the brown layer, but the omega threes in the salmon are throughout the flesh. Also, those are those white uh, lines you see in salmon. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's some fat there too. So. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. So mm -hmm. we've reviewed what omega-3s are mm -hmm. and where you can get them and what, what foods you can get them and all the fun things of why we should be taking them. Exactly. Yes. Awesome. So make sure you get your dose of omega-3s today. Mm -hmm. If you want to find a healthcare practitioner to help determine if you should be taking some extra omega-3s and if so, how much, then you can click on the Find a Practitioner link on our website, vitaminjunkies.com. And while you're there, don't forget to join the addiction and you can subscribe to our video podcast. Also, please complete our survey because we want to know what topics you want us covered on the show, vitaminjunkies.com. And when you complete the survey, you could win a chance to get a $100 gift bag from Hey Jute. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Jennifer Lyle. I'm Dr. JJ. And let's continue the addiction to good health. Do, do, do. Did, did, did.